Hi everybody and welcome to this next episode of uh, the build log for the Hypercube Evolution. So since the last video that I, I posted, um, the Hypercube has been busy printing parts. Here we have uh, two sets of parts for uh, a normal single Z-axis Hypercube and also the dual axis, dual Z-axis Hypercube that uh, I'll be converting this first printer into. So also parts have been arriving, uh, the postman's been coming fairly regularly. So uh, the, the rest of this video I'll take you through all the parts that we need to build the Hypercube Evolution and then move on to building the frame itself. Well here we can see the frame parts for the Hypercube Evolution. Now in the background there, there is the, um, the 2020 and 3030 aluminium extrusions. Here we have enough parts there for a smaller version of the Hypercube Evolution plus also the, uh, the parts to modify the original Hypercube Evolution into the dual Z-axis version. So the other parts we need for, uh, to assemble the frame is some 30-30 uh, uh, corner brackets. These came just as um, raw aluminium and I've uh, spray painted those black just to match the frame. Now, we'll also need some 30-30 uh, some L brackets. Now, I've been caught here when I ordered from China. I wasn't explicit. I said I needed uh, some L brackets, and of course, they've sent the 2020 version, so unfortunately, I will not be able to build the smaller frame. Now, for the single Z version, you'll need 16 of these. If you're building the, um, the, uh, the dual Z version, you'll need 20 of them. The other parts we need are some uh, M5 T-nuts, some M5 button head screws, sorry, these T-nuts are for 30-30 extrusion, and we need also some 20-20 uh, extrusion T-nuts, also M5, and we'll need a small number of M6 button head screws as well, uh, which you just need about six of those just to, uh, to assemble uh, the frame as well. So, um, unfortunately I won't be able to show you the frame going together, but uh, because I've got the original hype cube evolution pulled apart, and uh, and strip back to its original frame. So um, here again we can see as in the previous video we've got the 30-30 uh, the corner brackets there. Now I'll just flip this frame over just to show you uh, how the, uh, the concealed uh, fixings work. So here we have the bottom of the frame and here we can see in the corner the, uh, the concealed 30-30 corner L brackets and the standard 30-30 corner bracket. Um, so basically they slip down and down and I've also taken the opportunity to uh, to tap each of the, uh, the uprights for uh, an M8 foot which is coming along the way as well so just to give some protection to, uh, to the tabletop from the, the sharp edges of the frame. So the assembly of the frame is relatively straightforward uh, there's just a few things to take note. Now the first is the, the bottom cross members. Now these need to be spaced 10 millimetres off the bottom there and this is to allow for the, uh, the Z-step motors to, uh, to be at the correct height. And as I mentioned earlier, making sure the frame is really nice and square is, is also important. This will affect the quality of the parts coming off the final printer. So here we have the motion parts for the Hypercube Evolution. And starting with the, the step motors, here we have, uh, this is for the dual Z version, so here we have two NEMA 17 uh, integrated T8 lead screw step motors. A um, couple of step motors there for the XY motion, yeah, another step motor for the extruder. And here I've just uh, done a quick example of another alternative uh, Z axis uh, step motor setup. So using a standard step motor, a, a coupling, here we have uh, an M8 threaded rod and, uh, and nut, and or, or alternatively a, another T8 lead screw with its nut. Now I'll show you that, uh, how that could potentially work as another uh, option to uh, rather than using the, the integrated lead screws. Um, now for my build of the Hypercube Evolution I've used uh, 8mm, 10mm and 12mm uh, linear, linear rails. Um, now various people have asked for various combinations of that so you can choose which uh, combinations of rails that you'd like uh, for your Hypercube Evolution. So for the linear bearings, uh, for me, for the, uh, the Z-axis, I'm using, uh, again, just the, uh, the, M uh, the 12 millimeter, so the LM12UU uh, linear bearings. For the, um, the Y-axis, now the Y-axis can either take two LM10UU uh, linear bearings on either side, or the longer version, which we have here. And uh, with this rebuild, I'm actually gonna try these. These are the IGUS, 10mm dry lint 
uh, bearings. So we'll be, we'll be putting those in the y-axis to see how they go. So for my um, my x-axis, I'm using 8mm rods, so they are LM8 UU bearings, but as uh, as for the y-axis, I'm going to try these um, these uh, these Igus dry-in bearings. Now these are a different diameter to the uh, to the standard LM8 UU bearings, so I have redesigned the X carriage to accommodate these, and I'll be polishing that on Thingiverse. So there'll be three versions for the for the X carriage. Uh, one that takes the the LM10 UU, one that takes the LM8 UU, and also one that takes these Igus bearings. So it'll give people various uh, combinations there, um, which they to, to customise their own own. Uh, uh, X axis. You'll need a, your GT2 uh, time pulley. So here we have six 20 tooth um, idlers and two equivalent 20 tooth uh, plain idlers as well. So they're just uh, they're the three millimeter versions, the little bearings in there. Then you also need two um, GT2 20 tooth um, drive pulleys to go on your uh, on your stepping motors. And of course, then some uh, some GT2 uh, belt. Here I'm using a polyurethane belt. I'll prefer this over the over the rubber belt, as there is less stretch. So here we have the remaining parts needed for the build of the Hypercube Evolution. So let's start with a with a power supply. Now you can either use 12 or 24 volts. It, it is your preference, and just basically uh, determines the heating time for your system. For me, I get really tired of waiting for the heat bed to heat up, so I go for a 24 volt system. Now you'll need a, a, a control board of your choice. Here we have an Arduino G with a, a RADS control board. Uh, this is what I've been working on for to uh, use this with Linux CNC. If you'd like a display to go with it, and uh, of course here we have a a, a power expansion module uh, to run a 24 volt heat bed. Uh, thermistor for your heating, of course. Um, a 5 volt proximity switch uh, for, uh, for for Z homing and bed leveling. I've, here I've got five meters of two-core cable for uh, for wiring thermistors and fans, etc. Some uh, some four-core uh, cable for step motors. Here we have some three-core ribbon cable, which is just uh, uh, servo ribbon cable, uh, which we use for uh, for extending the uh, the, the end stop uh, or the limit switch uh, connections. Um, now, depending on the um, the step motors you choose, um, you may or may not need to. Uh, to get some connectors to go with these. So these are, are JST uh, PHR6 um, uh, connectors and they suit these, uh, these stepper motors. So uh, a 50mm radial fan for uh, part cooling. Of course you'll need a, a build platform, uh, a heated bed. Yeah, this is uh, off my, my uh, old Prusa i3 and I'll be using this on the smaller version of, uh, of the Hypercube Evolution. Uh, here we have a genuine E3D uh, V6 hot end. Love to support the, the guys from E3D um, rather than buying a knockoff Chinese one. Here we have the optical uh, end stops, so the four of those uh, X min, X max, Y min, Y max. Um, for me, because I was running on a 24 volt system, I also use uh, these small 24 to 12 volt DC to DC converters. So that's pretty much the electronics, and you'll also need some fasteners and so forth to, uh, to complete the build as well. I just buy these uh, these packs of M3 socketed screws. Um, one of these packs gives enough uh, enough screws for the complete build of the Hypercube Evolution with a few spare, so it's really handy. Um, now, for the, uh, the 3D printer parts, we use these um, M3 threaded inserts. Now, these get uh, put into the, uh, the, the the 3D printed parts using a soldering iron, just heating these and pushing them in. You'll need, uh, of course, something to mount your heated bed with. You have some leveling screws. You'll need uh, just a couple of oh, four uh, M3 um, nuts and some M3 washers. We will show you where they go. And also, here we have some three millimeter um, dowel pins. Now, these are actually used on the uh, the X carriage to locate the extruder onto the X carriage. So um, that should give us all of the parts that we need, uh, well, purchase parts for the Hypercube Evolution.